The idea of being able to control things with our minds has always fascinated human beings. But what if it's closer to reality than we thought? Control Labs is a neural interface startup that was recently acquired by Facebook. It was born out of a brainstorm back in 2015 between neuroscientist Thomas Reardon and his two co-founders. Their goal is to bridge the gap between the human brain and the machines that dominate our lives. I stopped by to meet the co-founders to see just how close reality is to science fiction. So what is it that you were trying to solve when you started Control Labs? What kind of propelled you to start this company? You're really good at absorbing information. Mm -hmm. And it turns out just because of your body, not because of your mind, you're really bad at getting information back out of your brain, your actual intentions. Mm -hmm. We're absolutely of full faith that people will not use devices, keyboards, mice, swipe screens, mm -hmm. joysticks, to communicate with machines in the future. You will use your mind and it will be direct. So you want this to be accessible to the average consumer. What does the technology look like? The wrist is the most highly innervated part of the entire body. There's more nerve going to the wrist to control your skillful hands than anything else in your body. So we said, let's build a device that goes to really where all the nerve is, right here. Okay. And let's repurpose that. They've come up with what they're calling the control kit. It's not much bigger than a smartwatch, and it allows you to interact with a computer using just the signals from the nerves in your wrist. So I am able to, with pinches, pick up and move objects in this scene. So as I squeeze harder, it goes faster. As I squeeze less hard, it goes slower. And then I have force power, so I can pull it towards me, push it away. What might this look like in the hands of consumers, let's say? These same controls can be mapped onto basically anything. So these same pinches can be mapped onto, say, music controls mm -hmm. or onto buttons on the screen. Uh, and you can imagine a world where we don't have to actually touch a screen very often. We can just use hand motions to, to control things that actually we can see on our other devices. Oh, that's very cool. I just tested it right. out, and what are the really big, interesting uses that you think this might have down the road? We're seeing a lot of use in VR and AR, mm -hmm. uh, where, where people want to get their hands back or know what their hands are doing, or just mm -hmm. control something without a mouse and keyboard that walks around with them everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. One area of interest is robotics, if mm -hmm. you want to be controlling a high-dimensional, high-degree-of-freedom robot. This robot happens to have six legs, I guess, right. <laughs> um, and I only have five fingers. Yes. Um, so we map these four to my, these four fingers, and we map this one to my thumb. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, I do something like this. It tries to pinch. It doesn't yeah. quite reach, but it does. Right. Um, or I do something like this. But basically, I'm able to. So you can see, like, move my fingers around, and um, I can even kind of like flex, and it picks that up, um, which is pretty cool. And the cool thing about it as well is that, like, for the most part, robots kind of take data in, right? Mm -hmm. Like ones and zeros. So it's like the way you, robots take an input are generally not intuitive to humans. Mm -hmm. um, but with technology like this, what you can do is give input to the robot in a way that's intuitive to you, that's natural to you, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that the robot can interpret and work with and right. act on. Right. So the input is, is from humans, and mm -hmm. the robot is kind of learning from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and becoming maybe more human <laughs> in that process, <laughs> maybe. Today, at best, in your most accurate scenario, you're going back and forth on a touchpad or yeah. a touchscreen in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. You know, when the Apple Watch came out, my finger didn't get smaller. <laughs> it didn't get yeah. easier to communicate, to really right. author, mm -hmm. and really take my ideas and translate them out. Instead, if I had the idea and I had my watch, I just looked at it and said, well, I guess I'll wait till I get to a keyboard and try to get this out. The technology behind Control Labs is supposed to harness the intention behind your action, effectively read your mind. It's not quite there yet, but I could see how down the road you might be able to use your smartphone without swiping or use a computer without using a mouse. The most interesting application of their technology was the hexapod. Watching the hexapod, I finally understood what this technology might look like in practice and how it might make our lives easier in the future.